Good morning, Apollo. Well, today I would like to talk about something that's a little bit of a sensitive issue because this is something that's seriously, seriously come very close to ruining my fucking life. Now, I have a number of chronic pain issues. Um, I stopped counting after six diagnoses. Um, and uh, this is probably the worst out of all of them. It's, uh, it's essentially prostatitis, you know, pelvic pain, some call it pudendal neuralgia. Um, the doctors aren't exactly sure what it is, um, but it has to do with my prostate or my pelvic area. And what it essentially does is it makes my prostate throb and it hurts and it makes my cock and balls hurt. A lot. Um, and it also gives me like a number of weird other sensations. Now, um, because of this, uh, I haven't had sex for three years because sex very much hurts. I mean, at the beginning of those three years, I was dating someone. I, I was dating someone for about a year and a half of that three years. I mean, like, she it wasn't a very sexual person, so it was actually like a perfect match for me. And she was like probably the most gorgeous woman I've ever, ever uh, had the, the glorious opportunity to be with. And um, I had sex with her a couple times, but it's just very painful. Now, I know a couple of people who you sort of don the whole incel mentality that, oh, I, I've been rejected so many times and I can't have sex, but somehow I know how women work. Because I'm red pilled. Fuck off. Like really? Um, you know, like uh, I think it, I, I get the feeling it's a cosmic joke sometimes that I have this condition. But at the same time, like I don't really blame anyone for it. Certainly not women. And that doesn't mean like I've stopped pursuing women. Like you know, I've still had tussles and you know fooling about and stuff like that, but I just don't go after sex, like, vigorously. Um, which, you know, it sucks. I miss it because I, there's a bit of a freak in the sheets back in the days, you know? But, um, I don't necessarily need my dick to pleasure women. But, um, you know, the point I really want to drive home here is that, uh, you know, I am dealing with a medical condition that's causing this. And I do not have any animosity towards, especially not women. Like, you know, if, any, if I have any frustration, it's with my doctors and their seeming inability to figure out what the hell's going on. Now, I also still, you know, the majority of my friends are women. And, you know, a lot of those friends I have. Um, either a platonic relationship with, so I get to mess around with them a little bit, or I get to mess around with them, like, as much as we both want to. Um, so, that doesn't mean I've shut down my existence and I've essentially estranged myself from women. Uh, and, like, this is a serious fucking condition, man. Like, it keeps me in pain 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And, I, like, I can't sleep a lot of the time because of it. Um, uh, it causes me a great deal of anxiety because I, I deal with it when I'm in public. Um, nothing seems to make it go away. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just it's god-fucking-awful. But, you know what? It is what it is. And at this point in time, there's nothing I can do to change that. So, you know... Incels, like you're saying that, I, I, I can almost hear you right now, you're like, oh, well, you know what, but my thing is genetic too, is I can't change the way I look, like the women reject me. You know what? Most women I meet for the first, like, few weeks, they're like, this guy's weird. I don't know, I like him, but I don't know if he's, like, potentially a freak behind closed doors. They don't say that, but they, they'll say, you know what, you're so weird, but you're cool. And then they'll realize, hey, you know what, he's a, he's a cool guy. 
here's the thing is, when it comes to women, do not approach them with the desire in your mind, the motivation of, I'm getting laid if I slam dunk this. That's not the, the approach. And, you know, if, if you are, you know, quote unquote ugly or whatever, dude, I had fucking awful braces in high school and I still, you know, was able to get girlfriends because I tried. And, you know, I've been rejected a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It happens. Move on with your life. It's not a great tragedy. Like, seriously, you know, you what you do when you get rejected, what you're supposed to do, what I think anyways, is you learn, okay, what, what did I do wrong? Um, how could I avoid this happening again? And, uh, you know, what can I do to patch up the relationship with this woman? Because, you know, women don't necessarily exist so you can bone them. Seriously. Like, I am very much a feminist. I believe that, you know, women have, should have, the right to be able to be autonomous and to do what they want, to fulfill their ambitions, to be given some credence by the rest of the world when they say, hear me out on this. I don't think that's a fucking stretch. Um, and as I said, most of my friends are women. I tend to get along better with women than I do with men. I don't know what that says about me, but whatever. It could be because like I'm, I'm somewhat androgynous and um, I embrace my feminine side more than a lot of guys do. I have a lot of women who confide in me, um, and, uh, yeah, like, it's, it's, if you treat them like human beings, which they are, then you'll get a lot farther than treating them like a meat sack that you can stick your dick into, um, and, you know, it doesn't matter if you, if you look ugly or whatever, you just got to, and I know this sounds corny and cliche, but you just gotta be yourself, and, you know, if your personality doesn't necessarily mesh with someone else's, then you read that and you move on so you don't persist and make that person bloody uncomfortable, you know what I'm saying? So, like, seriously, um, you know, there, there are, I've had rejections that have, like, legitimately surprised me, like, uh, and the thing is, not everyone is who I'm into sent to me. I mean, that's just a fact of life. That's what happens. You know, you gotta be, you gotta approach this stuff from an objective stance, you know? And, um, you know, because of my, my, my prostatitis, it sucks. I've had to reject a lot of people who I wanted to be in full on relationships with, but the insecurity of not being able to have sex you know, really bothered me for a long time. And then I was like, oh, wait. You make a check come fucking three times as much, and, you know, like, uh, the, the, the amount of time it takes them to spurt once. And uh, you can do that with toys. Um, and if you get creative, you get kinky about it, you get, like, some, some like, fucking leg braces and shit, and... You know, like, I'm the doctor of orgasms, <laughs> you can make it happen. And you also, like, another thing, if you're approaching, like, women from the, the sort of incel mindset of they exist sort of to, like, give me sex, then you're also probably going to approach sex from a way that's going to make women go, I want fucking nothing to do with this guy. Because that will apply as well. That will roll all over. You'll be thinking of, oh... I am pleasuring myself when I get sex. That is not how you should approach it. That's that's what leads to people being like fucking one minute wonders, you know, three wham bam thank you man kind of guys. Like, and women don't like that. You know, you gotta be fucking reading them, reading how they shake, how they quake. If you can get them there, like it's it's an art. It is something. It takes practice to learn, but, um, I mean, I'm by no means an expert, I'm by no means a fucking player, I mean, I've had my fair share of tussles, but, um, you know, I'm just saying, if you want to get a woman and you want to keep her, you gotta learn what makes her tick, what makes her rumble, you know, you know, 
you don't know, now you know. Now, this is all about turning that inner selfishness of I go in and keep a chapter. Yes. I think, well, it's me. My existence is just a big joke. Well, you know what? It is if you're making it a joke. Um, if you turn that selfishness into selflessness, you give, you give. Because that's, you know, that's what people, not just women, people like to see is giving. You know, not to the point where you get taken advantage of. You know, you know don't give all of yourself away. But try to be generous. Try to be kind. Try to do acts that are outside of your personal scope of, you know, needs. So, like, you fulfill your own needs on your own terms, but don't, like, rope someone into it because then they will feel like they're in an unhealthy relationship, a toxic relationship, something that only exists to serve that one person. Um, and that is, you know, the basis of, say, a toxic relationship. And um, there's no point in, you know, getting laid or getting a girlfriend if you're just going to, like, irradiate them with this awful, like, vindictive sort of the everything must orbit around me kind of mentality, you know? Like, like I, I hate to say this, but it's that kind of behavior that leads to abuse. Um, because you are only operating from a place of me, my needs, how do I fulfill them? And it's almost gluttonous in a way to be like, oh, I deserve this, 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 and that. We don't deserve anything. We put in effort. Sometimes we get what we want. Sometimes we don't. But, you know, if you put in effort from a place of, oh, I understand this, where this person is coming from, then I want to meet them halfway. At least, if you get rejected, you'll probably still have, like, a friendship with them that could burgeon into whatever. Like, seriously, just, just, you know, these are, these are points that you should, you should keep in mind. Because, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I hate the fact that sex was stripped away from me. Especially at the point where I was dating the, like, most gorgeous out-of-my-league girl in my life. Um, doesn't mean I, you know, I didn't, didn't go down on her, make a purr or whatever, but like, you know, I would have liked to, I would have liked to, yeah, I mean, I had some, had some serious sweaty all night sex with her, but because she was just, well, she was just a, a bombshell, but I couldn't, and, um, you know, and, and as I said, now, like, you know, I've had to, I actually had relationships end because, you know, people wanted to be in a relationship with me, and I had to go. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, letting my insecurities burn those bridges. So, you know, like, and, you know, that's not, that reminds me, keep in mind, you know, if you get rejected by someone, you never know quite what's going on with them. Like, that was, like, with me, there, they, they, there's no obvious reason why I should have. I was reciprocating like everything when they came on to me because I liked them, but then when push came to shove and they did want to take it higher, I just, that's when the insecurity came up. So, you know, that is my example of, uh, of how, you know, involuntary celibacy has ruined a lot of things for me. Uh, and, you know, in terms of interactions that could have led to a relationship. So, uh, you know, despite that, here I am going, it's a me thing, I gotta work on that, I gotta figure out how I can treat this and get back to where I was before. You know, it's gonna take time, and also how do I operate outside of, you know, like, pleasing someone with just my dick. You know, it's, it's, it's not that hard of a thing to do, so, you know, once I actually, like, Gear in my mind towards it. Oh, toys. Oh, get creative with it. Like, I, I had that figured out within like a day. You know, it's just you gotta stop operating from a place of like me being 
central to everything. Yes, we are central to our own existence, but not to the existence of others. You can't tell other people what to do, especially not a prospective lover. That is how you drive people away. Take it from me. I've had instances in the past where, like, I've, I've gotten drunk or whatever, and, like, I've called up exes, come on, let's give it another try. And I drove them away. Naturally, that's what happens, man. Um, you know, this is like, if you flip the roles, how would you feel? So it's understandable. You know, I have no scorn against fucking anyone, really, like, um, you know, I don't like the fact that one of my exes basically normalized heroin use around me because, you know, I became an addict right after that. And then, you know, I don't like the fact that one of my exes fucking stabbed me while she was in a psychotic state. But at the same time, I don't think these were directly malicious acts, you know, psychosis and also, you know, the muddling effect of drug addiction. And I also can't abandon personal accountability while I'm, while I'm at it, like, while I'm reviewing these things in my mind. Um, you know, you've got to be accountable for your own mistakes, your own missteps, or you will never fucking learn anything. Um, now, I could go on, but I won't. I'll spare you. But, please, incels, heed what I'm saying here. Um... Because, yeah, I mean, how would you feel if, if your cock and balls were on fire every day, 24 hours a day? Like, seriously, agonizing fucking pain, debilitating fucking pain. And here I am, blaming them. You know? If I, if I can do that, then you can rejig this mentality of, you know, sex by design, you know, fucking red pill handbook sort of thing, like, no, be yourself, but be considerate of others, too, I know that sounds like, you know, kindergarten, but it is an elementary lesson, but it's also an imperative lesson, everything we do is a mutual, mutual exchange, that takes at least two people. So, yeah. Just set your sights on what the needs of the other person are. Um, you know, how could your needs and their needs be compatible? You know, what steps could you take to go out of your way to show you care about them? You know? Anyways, that's all I'm going to say. Um, prost well, I'll say this, prostatitis fucking sucks, it fucking sucks, it really does, I hate it so much, oh god, yeah, like, I mean, it woke me up early this morning, um, puts a tremendous deal of stress on me, um, all the time, um, but, it is what it is, you know, anyways, uh, I forgot to say this at the beginning of the video, but please do like, comment, subscribe, Tell me what you want to hear, I'll fucking give it to you. Anyways, I wish you all a good day. Now have a nice, happy Joe. Toodles, please.